at Grace, where Jesus calls us into growing, loving, and serving by grace through faith. It is good to have you here today. A few announcements. Um, Deacon Allison is on vacation, so we wish her a restful time while she was away and uh, a safe journey home again as she returns. Today is also the last day for uh, ordering Easter flowers, so if you would like to order plants, there are forms on the table down in the 6th Avenue entryway. You can fill them out, leave them in the offering plate, or if you're on the live stream or you're here and you missed the offering plate with that today, feel free to call the office tomorrow. We can still sneak your order in, but that's going to be it. So um, please make sure that uh, you get those orders in for Easter plants uh, right away. Tuesday evening here at Grace, there's going to be a service of peace and hope. We will be praying together, um, reflecting upon scripture, just having times of silence for our own individual prayers. It will be at 7 o'clock Tuesday evening. We'll be praying for Ukraine, for other places in the world, for our community, and for the peace that we all need in our own hearts as well. So please feel free to join us Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock. This will not be live streamed, um, so um, this will be an in-person service only that night. We are still collecting donations, and that table is filling up. It's a good thing to see. Uh, donations of snacks for the Welcome Church in Philadelphia. Uh, sometime during May, we'll be sending a group of people down. If you'd like to join that group, please talk to Kelsey, where you will be able to worship with the Welcome Church that day and help distribute the snacks. Please bear in mind that the snacks need to be the one ounce size snacks. Uh, there's uh, lists on the table of what is appropriate and uh, appreciated for that. So we have a few more weeks. That's throughout the season of Lent. April 10th, only two weeks away, is the rescheduling of an event we tried to do back in January, the Anti-Human Trafficking 101. That will be held in person at the Royersford Baptist Church April 10th at 6.30, that's a Sunday evening. It will also be live streamed. It's being um, presented by Royersford Churches in Action. There's a group of us churches who are a part of this. Our speakers for that evening will be from the Montgomery County uh, Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition. And so they'll be talking about human trafficking that is happening in this area and what we can do to prevent that. So really important message, a really good group, a great speaker. So again, feel free to join us either at uh, Royers for Baptist Church or on the live stream. We will be sending emails out with that live stream link in it very soon. Okay, communion today. One more thing that's changing as we're slowly doing things a little differently again. Communion today, you have the option of continuing to use the communion kits if you would like to do that and remain in your pew and you haven't picked up a kit, there are some in the narthex back there. Or you are welcome to come forward today to receive communion, and we welcome everybody to receive communion. So as you come forward, we're going to do it by stations. We're going to do this side first. Probably the live stream I just jumped off, sorry. Um, we're going to do that side first. So I'm not used to this camera stuff still. Um, and there'll be me in the middle handing you the wafer. The next station will be a communion assistant with wine. The next station will be a communion assistant with grape juice. So as you come forward, pick up a cup. Um, the silver trays will be open. Pick up a cup. Bring it with you. Please put your hand up. I will place the wafer into your hand. You may consume that. And then go to either the wine 
or to the grape juice, hold your cup up nice and still, none of this stuff, that's bad, um, hold it nice and still, they will pour the wine or the grape juice for you, you may consume that, and then there's a trash can on both sides, so as you go back um, down the side aisle to return to your pews, you may drop your empty cup into the trash can. When this side is done communion, we will switch, and then I will welcome this side to come forward. There's no ushers dismissing everybody today. Oh, the chaos of it all. Um, so you just get to come up as your spirit moves you, and that will be just fine. Um, it really worked well at the early service today. It's going to work well at this one. Um, we're all doing good with that. If somebody at the end of this service today um, would like to recycle cups, um, and this is for any Sunday, please feel free just to grab one of those bags, dump them into a bag, and take them with you so that they end up recycled instead of into a... Uh, a um, landfill. So you're welcome to take our trash with you today. <laughs> what an offer, right? Okay, so let's begin worship on that note. We begin worship in the name of God who makes a way in the wilderness, who walks with us, and who guides us in our pilgrimage. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. And now hear the good news of forgiveness. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. If you're here in person, you're welcome to stand up, fist bump, elbow bump if you'd like. You can stay in the pews. It's all good. Uh, we are glad that you're here. Peace to all those who are on the live stream as well today. We are people who take that peace out to the world, so uh, please remember to do that as you leave here. Kelsey is on her way up. She has a children's message for today for us. It is all you, Kelsey. Take it away. Oh, good morning. Yes, nice and kind of lively for a kind of cloudy day. I like it. So, who has ever done something that they didn't know how it was going to turn out? Maybe like, yeah, I see some, yep, mm -hmm, oh, yep, me, yep, I like it. Maybe some starting a new sport, right, like baseball or hockey or swimming, right, you start something new or create your own business, like maybe making bracelets for Ukraine. Um, maybe it's just going to a new school, right, and not knowing what that looks like. It's really hard to do things that you don't know how it's going to turn out. Especially with me, I'm a planner. I want to know point A, B, C, and D. And if you miss C, I don't want to be involved because I want to know what C is. Right? I want to know all the pieces of the puzzle. But I have something that reminds me every day that I don't need to know every piece of the puzzle. This is my first tattoo I ever got with my mother. It's imperfect. They messed it up, actually. So then I fixed it. Imagine that. But it's 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And it's right before what we're going to read today in Paul's letters to the Corinthians, what you're going to hear Pastor Christ talk about. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, is walk by faith and not by sight. Now, some of you know I have funky legs, and I usually wear leg braces. So it's kind of funny because I can't even walk anyway, right? Part of why I got it. It's hilarious. But <laughs> I appreciate the laugh. 
I think it's funny. Um, but, right, we have to walk by faith into things that we don't know how it's going to work out, like baseball or a new school or a new business or a new job. We have to, we have to do it, right, whether we know how it's going to work or not. But we go into it walking by faith, believing that it's going to be okay. And we do that as well in life and in our faith and with friends and with family. And the best part I like about this verse is that it reminds me that God is always with me. Whether or not I can walk, whether or not I know all the plans that are going to happen, whether or not I'm terrified of a new situation that we're going to do, right? God is there. And so as I walk by faith, I know that God is going to be there to walk alongside me, even if my walk is hard, even if I stumble, even if I'm a little scared. It's going to happen. So as you walk through the rest of this week, I want you to think about ways that you are walking by faith and not by sight. What don't you have a plan for that you're like, mm, I got to do this anyway? Pray to God about it. Feel God with you, because God is walking alongside you in this journey, whether it's a baseball game or a sports game or a new job interview or just a really crazy thing at work, right? Where is God walking along with you? Because God is there. Sometimes it's hard to truly believe when faced with the
of the second letter to the Corinthians. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Here ends the reading. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a story told by Joseph Jaworski. You may have heard it before. It's worth telling again, though. The story goes like this. A robin tells a dove, tell me the weight of a snowflake. And the dove replies, a snowflake? It weighs nothing more than nothing. And the robin says, well, let me tell you a story. I was sitting in a pine tree, and it began to snow, this soft, gentle snow. And I decided to count the snowflakes that landed on every twig and needle of my branch. I got to 
3,912,572. And when the next snowflake landed, the branch broke. With that, the robin flew off, and it left the dove thinking and pondering, hmm, maybe we are just one snowflake away from world peace. So do you ever feel like a snowflake? Do you ever feel like your individual efforts don't really mean a whole lot? That with everything going on in the world, that what you do as a person really probably doesn't matter all that much. Our hearts right now continue to break over the war and violence being perpetuated against people in Ukraine. It feels huge. It feels like our efforts might be insignificant. Whether it's war in Ukraine, unprecedented gun violence in Philadelphia, civil and political unrest in our country, we can feel like what we do doesn't matter. It may feel to some people that we weigh nothing more than nothing, the significance of a snowflake. Now, Paul writes to this church in Corinth that we heard in the lesson today, in this time of great unrest, maybe something that feels a little bit like what we're going through. The Roman Empire was greatly divided in terms of social status and freedoms, things like that. There were some people who enjoyed this great amount of freedom while others were kept in slavery. There were wars that were constantly being fought by the empire to expand the boundaries. Order was kept within the empire by the brutality of Roman soldiers. They called that peace. The church? The actual church itself was also experiencing this great division. There were lies and quarrels and accusations. And here comes Paul, who happened to found that church, by the way. Here comes Paul in this letter. One solitary man calling for the people of this church into reconciliation. Shalom. Peace. Be reconciled, he writes. Be at peace with God, with one another, with the world. For being just one person, Paul has some pretty big ideas, doesn't he? But why shouldn't he? Remember, this is Paul, formerly known as Saul, who was the persecutor of Christians. He was the one who hunted Christians down, calling for them to be killed. But then he has this experience with Christ, and he is transformed. He is made a new creation. And Paul shows that reconciliation with God, it's possible for anyone, absolutely anyone, anyone. Paul knows this. He experienced it. He believes it. And so Paul implores these Corinthians to seek peace with the God who already loves them. And he tells them, he calls for them to work it out among others within the church. Work is a really appropriate word here because peace is hard. It takes work. It takes time. It takes effort. He reminds them that their mission as a church and as individual followers of Christ is to create relationships of encouragement and support and love. Be ambassadors, he tells them. Not just recipients of God's grace. Eh, I am basking in God's love today. Yay for me. Not just that, but taking that love, taking that grace out into the world, taking peace to places that are divided and broken. Sounds like a lot to ask of individuals, let alone an individual church, doesn't it? But Paul is undeterred by what seems hard, maybe even impossible, because he trusts, for one thing, in the power of community. He believes that, similar to the snowflake story, when people work together, big things can happen. And Oh, it may not happen all at once. It will take time. It will take effort. First, sometimes we need to start small, changing the dynamics, you know, within our own families, reconciling loved ones, families, friends, in those little places first, 
And then as that happens, it's like a ripple effect. We can start to take that into our workplaces, our communities, our schools, our churches. And as we begin to develop relationships of peace and love and grace there, that goes out into the world. We have that blessing and responsibility as Christians. Paul reminds us of that, of going out into the world, encouraging peace far beyond our little circles. But even more than believing in the power of community, Paul believes in the power of God's love. The Corinthians, you and I, we are recipients of God's unfathomable love through this gift of forgiveness that came through Jesus Christ, we receive the uninhibited fullness of God's love. And this undeserved, nothing but grace love is a heart changer and a life changer. It makes us new. God loves you, no matter what. No matter what you think about yourself, no matter what others have thought about you, God adores you. God doesn't have you trying to prove anything to God. You have nothing to prove to God. And if that's true, then you certainly have nothing to prove to anybody else. You're free to be yourself. God has given you this title. God has claimed you to be God's beloved child. And so you are free to let that love and that goodness that you have been filled with just overflow to others. You are reconciled. You have peace and shalom with God. So what happens when we have the courage, and it does take courage, what happens when we have the courage to believe in God's love for ourselves and for the world? Well, we begin to notice those places that need reconciliation, those places that need peace. And I'm not just talking about the obvious places like Ukraine, but we begin to notice those places that might be a little bit more difficult, a little bit more painful for us to recognize. The people that we ourselves might have hurt, caused injury or harm to. And yeah, we've all done it. We also become more able to recognize those places that need reconciliation where people have been marginalized. And that's not about them needing forgiveness, but about us being willing to include, include these people into our communities, into our lives. And by marginalized, I'm talking about, for example, people who are homeless, people who are refugees, people who face discrimination. Boy, that's society keeping people at arm's length, right, whether we want to think about it or not. I'm talking about people who have mental health challenges, people who struggle with addiction. These are all people that society likes to keep at arm's length sometimes. It's more comfortable for us rather than dealing too closely. But until people on the margins are brought in, until they are included in community, none of us know true reconciliation or peace. As long as there are those out there, our lives are incomplete. The kingdom of God is in. And once we begin to notice the places where peace does not exist, that's kind of a head thing, going, okay, yeah, I see that now. I understand that now. Well, then something begins to change within our hearts. And we begin to feel inspired to do something, to have a response, to make a change, to actually try to bring about reconciliation. Now, not a single one of us is going to be able to tackle everything on our own. Um, that would be pretty hard to do. But together, like snowflakes, together we can make a difference, a big difference. The important thing is finding those things in your heart that God is calling you to. What's important to you to make that difference? And as you start doing that, you're going to notice that there are people around you that have that same passion, that same energy for caring about those places that need peace. Maybe... Maybe you'll be inspired to send financial aid to Ukraine. 
or maybe um, you'll be dropping off donations to Springford, to the school there, to uh, help uh, get supplies to people in Ukraine. That adds up. Maybe you'll advocate for a reduction in gun violence in Philadelphia. Maybe you'll do that by educating yourself or trying to educate others about the problem or by um, learning how to advocate for legislation that helps um, create more safety around the use of guns. That adds up. Maybe you'll volunteer or donate to get involved with Habitat for Humanity or Project Outreach or Open Door or a Code Blue Shelter. That adds up. Maybe you'll just begin to practice listening better, criticizing and judging less, forgiving more willingly, encouraging compromise and understanding. That all adds up. It means something when we do these things in our lives. Yeah, it's okay to be a snowflake. That's all right. Because we don't rely on ourselves. We're not just individuals working alone. We have the blessing of community, many communities, this community. And even more important, we have the power of God's love. And that is already at work in this world and in our lives. And it does make us new, and it does make a difference. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially Russia and Ukraine. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the yard of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving. Help us to trust the promise that everything can become new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this community, especially Project Outreach and Open Door. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This time, the communion assistants may please come forward.
In God's extravagance, we have been given food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. I'm going to invite this side to commune first.
Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. You are children of God, fed, blessed, and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, fatherly, faithful, and freeing, bless you this day and always. Amen. you on the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. Be blessed. Have a great day. Share some peace with others today.